Okay, guys, I am going to try really hard to do this as best I can because I'm really excited about this because I, for the first time ever, I think, have come up with a technique. I love Jennifer McGuire and Christina Warner and Lindsay the Frugal Crafter and Sandy Allnock, and I could just go on and on and on. And I see their lovely techniques that they do all the time. And I use them to create my own cards. But I've never been able to stumble upon my own happy accident or wow technique, you know. But I'm going to kind of show you where I'm at. So this is my portable craft room right now. <laughs> you guys know, I think I had surgery a little over three weeks ago I will put some pictures of that in at the end of the video it was very significant and I'm still in a wheelchair there is that when I'm not in a wheelchair I am in this lovely recliner but my husband you can see I got my little heat tool and my little stuff over there but my husband cut me this board that goes from one side of the armchair to the other and it's covered in a craft mat so I can stamp and play. I had my surgery on April 3rd. My birthday was on April 4th and for my birthday my kids got me the oxide inks that I am just now getting to play with and I was playing with it on photo paper and you can see how pretty and shiny it is, which was an accident. And I'm going to show you how I accidentally figured it out. So to start out with, I have a piece of photo, glossy photo paper. And the way I started out, I started out with these three colors. I'm really sorry about the quality of this video. Because I'm having to do this with my phone, hold it really far back because I can't zoom out any further this is like where it's at so I am sorry but I started out with faded jeans broken china craft pistachio and this is kind of wet right now because I just dipped into it but I basically just opened up the pad and smushed a line across of each one of these and then sprayed it with a water bottle and set my uh, photo paper down on it like this. This isn't that wet right now because I just picked it all up. I thought I would show it to you. So then I, this is what I had. And I did use my heat tool to dry that layer. Do be careful. Don't hold it too close in one spot too long. I'll show you what happens. The paper kind of cracks up which might be a cool thing too in another technique but make sure you're moving it quick and not holding it too close so well that was kind of wet so I'll try, it again. So I'll try to edit out this noise all right so now I want some more of these colors but instead of, I don't want to waste what I have, so I'm going to re-wet this down. Take my paper, and I just like to kind of pounce it, pick it up. It dries a lot quicker on photo paper. Photo paper has something in it so that ink dries really quick on it so that when you do print photos and stuff, you know, you don't smear them when it um, comes out in the printer. Okay, I'm going to keep drying this. I'm going to do that off camera um, and I'm going to pick up the rest of this because I don't want to waste any ink so I'm going to keep picking that up 
And then when I come back, I'm actually going to just put down one of these colors at a time and just kind of splotch it around. I'll show you that in just a second. Okay, so here I am. I cleaned up. I finished picking up the rest of it, cleaned it up. I put down just the uh, faded jeans. Here's it is dry. So I originally wanted these to kind of blend together, but I didn't really go about it right. So now I'm just going to try to come at it a different way with getting more of the color all over. Because I was kind of thinking of like a ocean water idea maybe. So I just sprayed some water. Again, y'all, I'm holding my phone and doing this. Holding my phone with one hand, doing this with the other. So I do apologize. But I should have kind of blot it down. Mainly on the bottom. Because I wanted the bottom. I kind of want like an ombre. Okay. And then I'm going to dry that. And after this is dry, I'll come back with the second. Okay. Now I have down the broken china. Spray some water. <coughs> I'm going to try to go through the middle part with this. I'm so sorry. I know this is a bad video, but guys, I've really missed doing crafting and craft videos and I told you my little craft room cart uh, my best friend actually came up with that idea two days ago because I had not been able to get into my craft room at all and I was really starting to kind of get depressed and watching y'all's videos and missing doing videos and it was just getting to me so this is my first day to play so I'm going to dry this and I'll be back all right now for our cracked pistachio. And I'm gonna dry that one. Okay, so this is oops. This is what we have so far, and I think I kind of want like some like droplets, and maybe like some droplets with peeled paint. So I think I'm going to try to do that. Is I'm not going to put this flat down because that's going to give me a whole lot more than what I need. I'm just going to kind of like just do it on the side. And then I have this little container that is great for traveling with watercolor and you can have like a clean side and a dirty side. I'm going to wet my paintbrush and I'm going to keep it pretty wet. Am I? Yeah, yeah, I am. I'm going to like make a puddle with this and like well, this is really hard to do with one hand. I really need my other hand. But, okay, so. Yeah, alright. So, I'm actually going to need to make this more watery. Because I'm, because I'm trying to do this for you guys. I don't have two hands. Because, like I said, my other hand is holding the recording device. I may have to give you the idea and then do it off camera. Yeah. Okay. So this is the idea. I'm going to do this with peeled paint and iced spruce and probably also the other three that we were using. And I'm going to dry in between. And I also might just, with my paintbrush, kind of like make some wavy, squiggly lines too. So, just to get some texture. 
All right, so I'm going to do exactly that with all those colors I just told you, and it'll come back, and I'll show you what I have. Remember to dry in between each color, though. Okay, so here's the piece. Now, it's not shiny everywhere because the distressing sleeve like a chalky finish. But here's what we have. So then I was thinking that maybe I could stamp on it and see how that would work out. So I was kind of going for a um, C, like under the C theme. And like I said, this is my... <laughs> my little portable craft room at the moment and these are the only stamps I have in here um my real craft room is down that hall into that corner and that would involve me getting all this off of me and getting my wheelchair over here and going down the hall and all that and then I have a hard time like I can get to this area, but then I have to get my walker to kind of get around my desk and everything. So, I guess I'm telling you that it's because this may not be the most beautifully designed card I've ever done. I'm having to piece together some stuff. And this, actually, I don't even know that it is going to be a card. I was just playing. So, I thought that I needed some seaweed of some kind and I'm going to use this Hero Arts stamp set the seahorses there's no seaweed in here so the other stamp set that I had in here was this that I've actually never been used um, this is a brand brownie brownie my local craft store here in Hawaii Ben Franklin's has a whole bunch of stamps by this brand and I guess because it's not really packaged very pretty and maybe a lot of people don't know about it they just really didn't sell so Ben Franklin's marked them all down to like 75 to 85 percent off so I got a bunch of them but um, I haven't really done a lot with them yet but I thought maybe this one I could arrange on this block somehow I'm going to try not to get ink here where I looped it around because I didn't want to cut it. But that, you know, maybe I could stamp some seaweed looking stuff. So I'm going to do that <coughs> with this. And then I have my little seahorses because they're layered stamping. I have them ready too. So I think I want the seaweed to be in front of the seahorses. So I think I'm going to stamp, yeah, I'll stamp the sea horses first. So I have all the blues and greens on here, and to make them stand out, I need to do darker colors, which I didn't even really think about. So let's see what we have. I guess we could do a pink seahorse. That might be a little strange, though, huh? I don't guess it matters. But we could do... Like some browns, some different toned browns, and maybe like a yellow. I don't know, y'all. I'm just like trying to think of something. So it's a three stamp process. I actually still have to put this other small one on there. So, like, this is your first one second one and third one lightest color mid dark so maybe we'll do the yellow the lightest color and then this the darker wait mid, lightest middle let's do iced spruce the middle and walnut stain the darker okay so i think you guys know how to do the stamp layering and again since i'm one-handed i'm actually going to turn the camera off for this part so i'm just going to normally normal stamp it i've got my layers it's going to go this one the most solid image your first one and then this color 
and then this color. And I'm going to stamp those kind of on here, and I'll be back when I'm done stamping. I've stamped them, and you'll notice when you're doing this later on, when they first stamp, they're wet, they're really bright. But then they start to dry, and they lose some of the brightness, and they have this pretty chalk. So what I thought I would show you is I did the seaweed down here, so I used peeled paint and cracked pistachio. And now I'm going to show you me stamping a little bit more. I felt like I need a little bit different contrast. So what color is this? Spiked marmalade. So I might even add a little brown. I don't know. So I'm going to try to do it on camera. And it makes a loop down there. I just don't, I didn't put the ink. I stopped the ink about right there. So you can see it's real bright. And as it dries, it kind of blends in. Well, there's that. I there is some bubbles in this stamp set, so I may add some bubbles, and I may add the shell. I'm not sure. Um, I'm gonna have to do that off camera. But any others that I'm gonna do off camera, I will strictly be using the oxide inks and this and stamping. And I'll be back. Okay, here it is. All I did was stamp some of the bubbles so when I was doing this one I didn't do the fish all I had done was this and stamped here and it looked like this then I spilt something on it and I wanted to hurry up and get it off so I wiped it with a rag and something amazing happened. However, now that I'm doing this for you guys, it may have been a freak thing and it may not happen again, but I'm going to take a corner of this dry rag and I'm just going to start wiping this off. And I have to do it off camera though, because I got to hold the paper and wipe right back. Okay, so I've just wiped one corner of it. There's still residue on it. Um, I'm just wiping with a dry rag. I'm going to finish wiping the whole thing off with my dry rag. And then I think I'm going to take a damp baby wipe and wipe over it one more time. I think the mistake that I made here with this is the seaweed that I stamped is very light over this really dark bottom so you might not be able to see it but again how cool is this I mean this particular arrangement that I did may not work but think of how cool the backgrounds and stuff that you could do that would work but okay so I'm gonna finish wiping it off with the dry rag completely and then lightly go over it really quick with a baby wipe um, it is photo paper so you don't want to like leave that baby wipe on it for a long time. You just want to do it really quick. So I'll be back. Okay, here it is. So I don't recommend the baby wipe. Do you see the streaks on the really dark blue part? That was from the baby wipe. So I don't recommend the baby wipe. Or I had a very, very wet baby wipe. Maybe not as wet. But I do think you have to be keep in mind um, the colors that you're laying over. Cause you see up here, my bubble showed up perfect. The detail and the seahorse showed up and down here you can see it too but it's just I was trying to do light colors over really dark so I mean but how cool is this though if you can see it's shiny just like if you took a picture and it's so pretty and I just think it's so neat how you're doing all that layering and you think it's kind of like muted but then you wipe it off and this is what you get and yeah, I'm really excited about this. 
Now, I'm thinking, I don't know if I'm going to do it on this, but I do know, because I did it on this one, I stamped these little guys on this after I had wiped off that layer. And I just did that with Memento um, ink, and it dried right away. So you could, I could go back in and layer some of the smaller sea courses and even some of the seaweed and some of the, the other shells on here with colored ink and make it pop out a little bit more. But I think this would just be really cool as a background and then you do some other artwork over the top of it layering. So I know it's kind of a funky video but it's the best I can do for my recliner and I just wanted to share and I'm definitely going to be doing more of this because this is so so cool all right and I'm gonna have a I'm going to say bye and hugs and loves from my craft room to yours until next time but at the end right after this I'm going to voice over some photos of my surgery and kind of show you what I've been going through the past few weeks. But I miss everyone and I miss doing videos and hopefully soon I'll be able to do another one. Bye guys.